Hello, Jim Matthews from GlassHoppa.com. This project is an exercise in revealing imagery, wherein we will use the negative space between cut pieces of glass to form our design. I found a photo of a bird I liked and traced its outline onto manila folder stock, then cut that out to create a pattern with a little stiffness to it. I had to go to all that trouble because I'm using opaque glass, can't see through the glass to trace the image directly onto it. Yes, I could have just drawn it freehand, but that would require skill. These points have to extend out to the edge, don't they? Now, the pieces I need intact for this are not the bird and the branch. I don't need that. I don't need that. I need that, 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 and that. And keeping the surrounding pieces intact is critical because I need to maintain the continuity of the swirls in this glass. Now watch what happens here. My cutter hit a seed and just stopped cold. I lift it, set it down again on the other side of the seed, and continue. A seed is just an air bubble in the glass that has broken the surface and failed to heal over. It creates a little pit. If you're going to do any grinding, limit it to the edges that form the image. Don't grind where the edges meet, like here, here, or here. It will only make hiding those seams less likely. Now I can reassemble the picture on my base color. You can see that I originally planned on having a border of the base color, which I ultimately did not like and trimmed away in the tile saw. Let's cook this bird and move on to something else. I'm sizing these to fit a set of wooden frames that I picked up at a half price sale. The particulars, as always, will be on the blog and the project PDF. And this approach is adaptable to other frames. Framing is optional, of course. These look nice on a stand or even wall hung using the acrylic tube offsets demonstrated in our Hanging Your Glass on Walls video. I don't want the image behind the frame like a photograph, but instead on top like a plaque. So it'll cover this, the frame opening. Which means I'll need some overlap because I'm going to use these thin double-sided adhesive strips to mount it. I've already sized my green to overlap the frame opening by a half inch or so, taking into account that I will want to trim the edges after firing. And here, I just wanted to give myself an indicator of where center would ultimately be. Then I drew some simple lines like tree branches, extended those lines to the edge of the glass, numbered my pieces, and Cut it up. In this design, I'm not cutting anything out, so to speak, like we did with the bird and the branch earlier. Here, the trunk and branches will be formed by spreading these cut pieces apart to reveal the back plate color underneath. And when I break this score, the spot most likely to fail is this point, isn't it? So that's where I grasp with my breaking pliers in hopes of shoring it up and keeping it intact. Another seed pit. Lift the cutting wheel, continue on the other side. Oops. 
See where it failed? Yeah, it'll be all right. It'll just look like the shape of the branch. <clears throat> Another seed. This one's in a tough spot too, right on the point. I'll try to loosen things up with a little tapping. we can make that work. The break between the five and six piece wonked on me too. You think it's me or is this glass maybe a bit more brittle than I'm used to? Let's piece it together and see what we got. I'm pretty sure I can make all my glitches work either by integrating them into the design or by hiding them. So I'll start playing with the spread, which will determine what the final image looks like and the size we need to cut our base plate. I don't need edge perfection because I'll be trimming everything square with the tile saw. The act of spreading this out has grown our design just a little bit. Now I cut my base color black to fit that dimension. This is cheap hairspray poured from its pump container into this little applicator bottle and drizzled in so that it seeps under the glass pieces. It doesn't take much and it'll dry stiff and rigid just like mom's hair. While the hairspray was drying, I cut myself a bunch of little black spearheads that we'll call leaves. There's really no pattern for these. Mine vary in size from three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half. Cut more than you need so you can choose among them as you piece your design together. I'm just placing these by feel, trying to keep the picture balanced and uncrowded remembering that the appeal of the design is its simplicity. Go. Take a look at this one. It was made with the same technique, but here notice that two of the stems end in open space instead of extending to the edge of the rectangle. Here's my initial sketch on the glass before cutting. And here it is after cutting and reassembly. I spread my cut pieces to form the main trunk and the top V, just like we just did. But to form the lower two branches, I ground the inside edges of the abutting pieces and left the rest of the seam intact. Let's see how our green scheme came out. You can see that I left a little more dimension in this one by targeting a lower forming temperature. To me, a little visible and palpable rise and fall to a piece like this makes people look twice. Otherwise, they might just think they're looking at a glossy painting. I pronounce myself satisfied. Let's look at the framing. First I want to be sure that the piece is centered in the frame. And once I'm satisfied that it is, I'm going to tape it in place so I can flip the whole thing over and mark the positioning from the back side. Now I can mark the exact position of the frame on the glass using my ever handy silver sharpie. Remove the tape. Save the pieces for mom's quiet time. Then place the glass face down 
you can see my position mark and that's how it will fit. I will place my double-sided adhesive strips at the edges where the glass overlaps the frame. Keep the strip at least an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the glass. Then expose the adhesive on the frame side and ever so carefully reposition the frame on your marks. Now I hope you see lots of possibilities in this. If you keep your eyes open, you'll find plenty of beautiful, simple imagery that you can adapt to this approach. Remember to consult the blog post and the project PDF for these patterns and details on firing and materials used. So go forth and fuse. And as always, thank you so much for your support.